Welcome back, everyone. I'm Satya, and I'm hosting the track two of Execution Stream. We are in our final segment of the day, and our first speaker this afternoon is my favorite colleagues from Insurance Australia Group, Sinad Amity and Christopher Nikoloski. They are very passionate and enthusiastic DevOps leaders at IAG, who are the backbone of building an API ecosystem platforms. They both excel in bringing thought leadership and also build a great mindset and culture into the teams. Welcome, Sinad and Chris. Hi, Satya. Hello. How are you? Hello. Personally, I'm excited to present you both here today. <laughs> Thank you. So you're here to share how we are streamlining the API product delivery through data insights at IAG. Uh, your slide is up. Uh, Chris, can you speak? Yeah, I'm speak. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. We can hear you both. All good. Take it away. Hi, everybody. Um, it's great to be here. Um, usually we are keen participants of API days, but uh, it's good to be presenting this year. So let's take it away. API productization has been a growing trend within API community. Many topics at various API days have uh, discussed this in detail, and, and rightly so. There are many ways of delivering API products that matter to our customers, and we're here to tell our story of our experiences at IAG. The aspects of streamlining API delivery are truly multifaceted, and we'll have a deeper dive into API observability and, Dora, and the use of Dora metric, metrics that allowed us to collect a lot of metadata and extract learnings that got fed back into continuous delivery life cycles, which led to a more streamlined product delivery. So my name is Senad Ameti, and I'm a lead, in, a lead DevOps and API engineer at IAG. And I will be joined by Chris Nikolovsky, who is also a lead engineer at IAG. Afternoon, all. Uh, IAG is one of the largest general insurance companies across Australia and New Zealand, and South Insurance under many leading brands like CGU, NRMA, WFI, AMI, and many more. The API direction at IAG is very much orientated towards building APIs that engage in multi-brand and multi-channel uh, functionality. This strategy enables IAG to engage with its consumers, partners, and brokers more efficiently and fosters growth in the business. Observing the way consumers use products has always been an integral part of product delivery. It enables the providers to build products that meet consumer needs and expectations. An API product is really no different. This presentation will cover three key areas in detail. Firstly, we'll discuss API product mindset and delivery, followed by API observability and door metric practices at IG, and I'll finish up with some of the lessons learned along, along our journey. Before I get to describing the API product mindset, we first need to understand what an API product is. An API product is best described as a collection of APIs that enable the consumer to complete a, 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 complete a purchase online or securing motor insurance. As API developers, we need to determine what a consumer needs and try to shape our APIs in a way that deliver business value. This can be achieved through the API product mindset. As you can see on this slide, we have four key areas of importance that all focus on consumer enablement in some form. Firstly, we have ease of consumption. APIs need to be discoverable, secure, well-documented, easy to use. Ultimately, we need to make every effort possible to, to empower our consumers to succeed. Next, we have consumer engage, engagement and happiness. This is all about delivering our promises and providing all the support our customer needs to, to integrate. Here, we're aiming at delivering new features rapidly, fixing defects regularly, and providing a stable platform for integration. Uh, next is long-term value at scale. This focuses on how API products can be grown and reused across different consumers, and how we can uh, create a structure or how we can structure delivery teams to be able to scale at pace without impacting quality. Lastly, as for products, APIs need to be managed, maintained, and optimized to keep pace of rapidly evolving consumer needs in an economical and sustainable way. The way we view API product delivery is that it puts the product mindset that Chris described into action. So we design and deliver APIs with the consumer first or outside in perspective. We also um, put API products uh, through a CI CD pipeline from day one, not just the technical aspects or tef technical artifacts, but the API products themselves. And this allows us to build, deploy and test APIs uh, in, in, a, in a rapid way uh, until the customers are satisfied. So it empowers developers, uh, designers, API product owners, and so on 
for uh, for you know quick test and learns, MVPs, ATB testing, etc. But in order to do this, the streamlining of API delivery is all about getting the right delivery model for the API team. And in the coming slides, we'll, we'll discuss into uh, discuss discuss a bit more about this. Having um, a set of standards and lightweight process is extremely important. Uh, adopting and championing DevSec ways of DevSecOps ways of working for us has been proven to be quite successful. Chris and I are massive fans of you build it, you own it, and you support it type model, which is quite powerful and allows the teams to take accountability and ownership for what, what they build and maintain and support. Next is the tool, uh, right set of tools and practices packaged for a wider adoption. What we found is while we are massive fans of open source, a combination of um, enterprise tooling, in this case, we use Splunk as an enterprise tool, and open source tooling such as Spring Boot, Kubernetes, Prometheus, Zipkin, et cetera, uh, hit the sweet spot. When it comes to practices, uh, any form of agile, Kanban, Scrum, or anything in between will do just fine. The importance of having a, a widely adopted and agreed API guidelines and principles and standards cannot be understated. If multiple teams are building APIs for external partners, the need for API docs, naming standards, being consistent across API products is extremely important. The last thing we want to do is um, have external teams understand um, idiosyncrasies, teams application, or underlying our, our architecture of our, of our or corporation or company. The next is the set of strong governance structures. And, and the important part here, the important part here is the, the, the strong part, not a heavy governance structure. So we want to empower uh, like-minded API people to join in an API community of practice model where, where they collaborate and come up with new ways of working, new ideas, and, and maintain and adhere to set, uh, those previously mentioned standard guidelines and principles. Last but not least is we want to align ourselves to customer and partner journeys in a way that we want to hear our consumers, especially from outside our company, so we can participate in a larger API ecosystem. All this comes from a also a widely adopted API strategy within our company that all team work towards. This blueprint is paramount to any success in the API product delivery. Chris? Yep. T technology scaling is an essential element of API product delivery. To cater for our search demand, being able to scale technology even through serverless or container-based infrastructure is vital. But technology scaling doesn't have a Streamlining security, test automation, logging, metrics, and documentation are also very important ingredients to providing solutions at pace. Let's have a deeper look. We all know the importance of cloud and container-based scaling, so I'll just jump straight to security as a first-class citizen. This means automated security patching or server patching, portable security code that can be easily adopted across all integration points, automated test coverage across security vulnerabilities, uh, automated dependency checking, and also static code analysis tools. These tools will allow development teams to identify and resolve security breaches without putting any real strain on delivery schedules. Uh, next, we have real-time documentation. Um, all APIs doc documentation should be generated directly out of the code base using tools like Swagger and enabled via developer portals. Developers shouldn't be creating documentation manu manually as it will quickly move out of sync for deployed artifacts. Next, we have templating and starter packs. Common components like logging, security, health checks, and metrics should be externalized so that can be reused across all API products. API templates can be an effective pattern to achieve this, and also as a byproduct can speed up the development process when creating new APIs. Lastly, events, logging, tracing, and metrics should be embedded across all APIs and handled in a very consistent way. This is really the key to unlocking the wealth of information that, that passed through APIs. I'll now hand over to Sinat to discuss team success factors. What we also found is that getting the wrong people uh, can be detrimental to success of any team. With APIs being crucial to the relationship between customer needs um, and business value, the need for, to get the right people in the team it becomes a key factor of success. The following are some of the main traits that we found particularly useful when improving, uh, but also um, scaling our teams out for delivery. Emotional intelligence, it, there is a constant change in our environment and emotional intelligence and resilience are paramount. Being able to be adaptive to change, especially in, 
in an API world where we deal with uh, so many different consumers and providers within our company, but also from the outside, becomes crucial. The next is the culture fit. Uh, getting the right person with the right culture can, um, can benefit the team, vice versa, it can erode the team's successes and cause subpar products when the right person's not in. I know Chris and I said in many interviews in the past where we often picked the person potentially less expertise, knowledge, but with a great culture fit and back that we can actually teach them the right skills to, to thrive and succeed at IEG. And that brings me to attitude and talent, right? So you can teach skill, but you cannot teach attitude and talent. And that, that's very true uh, for what we found. Uh, attitude towards learning, towards improving and making sure that uh, things are done right. Next is obviously trust, and, and sometimes I feel like uh, the trust is underplayed in some ways. Uh, trust within API delivery teams that we're all pulling in the right direction, but also trust in a wider API ecosystem uh, that are within our organisation at the bare minimum that we are all doing the right thing and succeeding uh, towards our end goal as outlined in our API strategy. Lastly, last but not least, it's expert knowledge. Now, I'm not trying to underplay that you know, people with expert knowledge are not required, or they very much are. But if the previous points are not there, the expert knowledge becomes a bit mute. And, um, you know, it can erode what we're trying to build so, so, so much. But if all the previous traits are present and uh, we have someone with good expert or great expert knowledge, we start to see what the future looks like. And often it looks very bright. Navat Sanat and I have discussed why adopting an API product mindset is essential for success and what API product delivery is. We run into a big question. How do development teams know they are on the correct delivery path? During our journey at IAG, our team members would often ask the questions you see on the screen. Are we monitoring infrastructure and meeting SLAs? How do we observe individual transactions? Are we meeting our API KPIs? Are we deploying often enough? How long does a requirement take to move to production? And lastly, are we making our decisions based on data and not just uh, guessing? Our answer to all this was API observability and Dora metrics. Observability explains why something is happening uh, and provides actionable insights. The observable systems inherently offer data about their state through instrumentation and are designed for granular trend analysis, insight, context, a debugging and much more. Observability includes monitoring, but it extends it. It is both an outcome and a culture, similar in a way to DevOps. There are four main pillars of observability. These provide invaluable insights in what is happening to our API products and are truly the cornerstone of, for all future successes of API products. They provide various insights. So structured logging will provide a more in-depth insights into what's happening, but it can be a bit slow and cumbersome in some ways. Uh, and whereas metrics uh, provide trend analysis, et cetera, and can be a bit quicker. So quicker to gather and maintain for that matter. Next. By observing APIs, we can find many different insights. And the ones we see on the screens are the ones we found quite useful at IAG. Starting with custom API usage and growth, as observability involves handling actual user usage data, this data can be put to great use. Uh, businesses can drive their, um, their revenue growth strategies based on how well the users are accepting their updates and new features. The ability to analyze data um, on the fly opens up a whole new world of possibilities of usage and customer driven product development. This data can be used to build useful insights in how to optimize the product and generate more revenue for our customers. As an example, unique API consumers, which APIs use the most, which customers are using which APIs the most, um, opens up a, a wealth of information and insights. The next is troubleshooting API issues. And here we're talking about potential application level metrics. So how many successes and failures do we have? Um, you know, how many requests per minute we're getting, um, latency and so on. And these become extremely valuable because if we're getting too many errors or too many um, 
uh, potential security validation issues, we may look to improve our APR products so our customers can use them better. The next part is reliability. One of the most important goals of observability is to make sure reliability is intact. Um, our software systems, uh, basically the questions are, are our software systems error-free and failure-free for a specific period of time, i.e. its ability to function without failure? Observability exposes these issues in a system that can be immediately targeted and debugged before they fail uh, within the application. So as an example, we want to make sure that we monitor uh, CPU and memory of our Kubernetes pods, and if something adversely happens, we want to be able to auto-scale Kube pods in our EKS clusters, like we'll show later on. And last but not least, uh, the, observ the observability of security aspects is extremely important in maintaining security standards. Adequate, adequate visibility into the infrastructure, applications, environment. Uh, the teams can detect potential intrusions, threats, um, attempted attacks uh, before they even completed. So Chris will now take us through some slides that provide examples to some of these insights. Before we get to discussing custom usage, I want to set the scene a little. Over the last 45 years, our team has built out over 120 microservices containing approximately 400 API operations. At this scale, we needed a way to view custom usage as well as determine future growth errors. Creating dashboards like the one you see on the screen is not, is not an overly complex task using tools like Splunk, but getting the logs across all APIs producing the same data is a total different story. Luckily, all our APIs are built using a common set of libraries and templates, which enforce structured logging. Structured logging is a practice for implementing a consistent and predetermined message format for API logs that allow them to be treated as more like data sets rather than just plain text. Now let's have a look at this dashboard and, look and see what it's telling us. Firstly, as this is all production data, we've had to blur out some of the more sensitive indicators and metrics. On the top left, uh, you can see that we execute approximately 450,000 requests over a 24 hour period. These requests have been distributed across 234 uh, different API calls and in use by 72 different consumers across the company externally and, and externally. We're also showing a reuse rate, which is a very key metric at IG. This re reuse rate is really just the percentage of the multi of APIs that are used by multiple consumers. The dashboard is also showing a breakdown of API product metric across brand, channel, and total requests by consumer. As you're probably guessing, the data shown on the screen is only really touching the surface of what is possible with the wealth of information passing through our APIs. For instance, let's take a look at the pie chart in the middle there. Um, you can see clearly that there's a trend developing between where one brand is getting a lot of additional traffic compared to all the other brands at IAG. And just, just like that, we've, we've potentially found the business growth area. By enabling other brands to the same level as the one in the middle that's shown, um, it can only be mean good things for the business, its consumers, and all APR products in general. In the previous slide, we observed APRs on a very high level, but it's also essential to understand the flow of a single transaction. Just imagine a detailed insight into user behavior or understanding why certain consumers stop short of purchasing a product. In API terms, this could be as easy as a misfiring validation rule. The fine grained logging is achieved by transaction tracing. Tracing is a process of tracking an event, such as a request from a user throughout an application. It's achieved by applying a unique identifier to each incoming request and then propagating this ID to each subsequent service. Using tools like Spring Sleuth together with Zipkin enables the creation of the tracing diagrams you see on screen now. These diagrams outline execution path and time taken at each integration point. For instance, in the first diagram, we can clearly see the get allocations call perform system use security checks before retrieving information from an underlying system. The second call is slightly more complex there, where you can see it's got multiple integration points across view active policies, ensure details, security, and also payment details APIs. The ability to view user interactions at this, at this level allows developers to gain a better understanding of how consumers use an API. It provides insight into how code can be optimized, as well as dissect, as well as ways to dissect errors in great detail. The objective of metrics is to aggregate type data about performance, compliance, security, and provides invaluable insights um, into various aspects. 
API metrics enable you to both um, to monitor both engineering, business KPIs, uh, performance, etc. As previously stated. So what we see on the screen here is, is uh, one of our API products in motor repair bookings, where we monitor our Kubernetes pods, uh, the memory, the network, um, CPU. Obviously, we use Spring Boot in the background, as, as mentioned, um, JVM heap size, etc., and, and being able to take um, actions based of if something adversely is happening. So as an example, if if the pod memory or CPU starts to run out, we have things in place to automatically scale our Kubernetes clusters to meet customer demands. Um, the, this particular one is, is uh, just simply an example of application level metrics and events. So we monitor how many 200, 400, 500 series errors we're getting. And based on those, um, we provide um, insights into how well our API products are performing. So the, the more 200 areas we have, obviously our API products is, is performing as, as, as expected. But if we have uh, a series uh, of 400 areas that potentially breach our SLAs, uh, we can automatically trigger events um, that tell us uh, what is happening and we can quickly uh, turn around and fix the issues before they start affecting the wider uh, customer community. So based on this, we can see that um, being able to um, reliably, mention, reliably monitor our application infrastructure becomes crucial to our success. And obviously, the, the last part that we previously mentioned was security. We would have loved to have shown you um, some of the dashboards from our security, but I guess that would have been a security breach in its own right. So um, I guess what we're going to say that uh, the security is important and being able to observe that too is just as important as, as previous examples we've shown. So, so far we went through and described how to observe our API products. But what about being able to observe and get insights into how well are we doing in terms of API delivery itself? Are our processes stacking up? Do we have enough automation, etc.? So for this, we uh, use DORA metrics. So DORA, DORA stands for Dev, DevOps Research and Assessment. And there are key four key metrics uh, that need to be collected. Um, the metrics are all uh, related to what's happening to our production system from start of work to what's happening to our production system. And don't take into account our agile process and so on while we're on our journey to prod. So it really provides uh, a way to, to measure delivery velocity and quality. Over the next two slides, I'll go through some of our Dora findings. Deployment frequency was an area within our DevOps team that we believe was always operating fairly sufficiently. It was going really well. But as you can see on the screen, Dora tells a different story. From October 2019 to mid 2020, our deployment frequency was low. And we mainly like attribute this to long running projects with limited production release windows. And as you would expect, this resulted in large deployment artifacts that, in, that invited a high level of unwanted risk come deployment time. After seeing these numbers, we decided to shake things up a little. From mid 2020 to today, you can see a massive positive trend and we can associate this to automating our path to product and placing an emphasis on removing the fear factor for production deployments. Basically our main goal here was just to normalize production release and make it easier for people to do. As a direct result of this mindset shift, we started moving towards smaller release artifacts that in turn reduced release related deployment problems. Um, the lead time for change metric and deployment friction numbers painted a very similar picture for us. As you can see here, we were initially looking at lead times of over 100 days per change. In most cases, we had changes sitting dormant in lower environments waiting on project milestones before making that final push to production. In other scenarios, this was due to downstream dependencies on team waiting for um, contract related like API changes to be released at the same time. In order to reach our desired cadence, we needed to change something. Our first attempt was to do everything possible to reduce or even remove um, ch breaking changes in API contracts. This allowed us to decouple our releases from other teams and we saw an instant improvement from mid 2020 onwards. While our lead time for change has dropped significantly by looking at this graph, we're still on the lookout for new techniques, technologies to improve it further. As for the remaining door metrics of mean time to recover and change failure rate, we're still in our journey and will hopefully present our learnings in future presentations. 
So what are some of the lessons we learned along the, along the way? So being able to measure and observe uh, what is happening to various aspects of our API product delivery, the underlying infrastructure applications, et cetera, is paramount to streamlining API product delivery and successes of the future. The other one is use the data that you collect through metrics, both from uh, API observability and Dora especially, uh, for what it is and, and make tough calls. There's no point in collecting all this data and trying to uh, maneuver it in a way that it fits your process or, or fits a particular narrative within teams, technology, or process. Use it for what it, use it, for what it is and, and drive change. And that's the next point. The whole point of uh, observing what is happening is to make a change that's actually relevant to our customers and consumers of APIs. It is not to simply um, get a pat on the back that we're doing the right thing because more often than not, what you'll find is that you have some things to improve and that is constant. And next one is trust your team in the process. Basically, if you have the right people on the ground, anything's possible. It's all about having that vision and direction early on. Uh, next is learning is our uh, next learning is that every team must have a backlog and room for improvement. As Sinead just mentioned, there's no end game to API delivery. There's no perfect team. We all have some room for improvement. As you saw in our previous slides, positive change takes time. So our diagrams there show that from 2019 onwards, we've been making changes to amend our process. So it's really about setting goals and adding them to your backlog to, to, to back to action that change. Our next goal is fostering innovation and thought leadership. And this is really all about change. Change is a good thing and must promote them as much as possible. Team members need to be encouraged to investigate new tech or even experiment with alternate ways of working where possible. And last one, and yeah, last, what else and last one, I guess, just have fun. Um, the, the, whole, the whole point of doing this and being passionate about APIs is to have a bit of fun and, and, and enjoy the journey. Um, it's not gonna, there's no end in sight and there's always room to improve as previously mentioned, but along the journey, we have to have fun and enjoy ourselves. Uh, many of our ideas have come over Friday night beverages uh, with colleagues, so just enjoy it. And thank you for having us. Uh, we very much enjoyed presenting this today. And if there are any questions, um, please let us know. Our contact details are um, on the screen. Thank you. Great, Sanat and Chris. That's wonderful. Yes, having fun is important. Friday basketball and <laughs> other things <laughs> that makes so. great ideas, definitely. So there's one question. So uh, what's next steps in terms of API observability for, for your team and for your organization, in your opinion? So the important part here is as well, as, as Chris mentioned, there's some Dora metrics we're still collecting data on in terms of change failure rate and so on. So we want to improve our processes even, even further, uh, make sure that we, we push the production many times a day as expected. Um, the other parts as well in terms of observability, we really want to bring uh, some of the data uh, we observe from an API product um, to the forefront of, of management as well. So they can see what value and benefits they bring hands on. Um, so I guess th those are the two main aspects that we, we're pushing towards. And obviously we always on the lookout for the best new, especially open source tool that we can use to, to help us on our journey. That's, that's good. And uh, how do you get the business buy-in in, in uh... API observability outcomes and have you guys started and what's where are you guys in that in that space? Look, we we're very much on a journey with that. I mean, getting buy in from um, a wider community is always is always tough. Um, there's always we have to provide value. And that's where I mentioned uh, being able to provide value to various um, first API product delivery teams because they would need them the most, but also wider community within our organization, potentially outside where, where required, becomes crucial to our, to our view, to our way forward. Um, so yeah, it, it's a matter of making sure that people see what we're doing in terms of observability and um, showcase how important being, building API products are. And based off that, usually the buying is not necessarily required once people see uh, how much value it provides. So it's all based on uh, business value and customer outcomes. Perfect. Thank you. 
Uh, that's all I had. Is there anything else from both of you? It was, it was a pleasure thank, to thank be here. Yeah, wonderful. Thank you. Very much Wonderful. Thank you so much for both of you to be here uh, in API Days Australia. Uh, wonderful to have you both. And I'm sure uh, we'll see you in many more conferences presenting. So thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye.